Beloved of God, yet again, on our second day this week, we welcome you to our reflections this week. May we pray as we begin. Loving Father in your Son, Jesus Christ, may you speak to us and open up the truth of your word as we reflect this morning together with your beloved, in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, we are always very glad to have you join with us in these uh, homilies as we encourage each other, as we challenge each other, as we allow God to speak to us. Yesterday, we began reflecting on rebellion, and we saw how Saul was given instructions by God, how Saul disobeyed God, and how Saul tried to lie when Saul confronted him with the truth. The consequence then was that God rejected Saul. And we saw two things about rejection. Number one, that when we are rejected by God, then he strips us of the honor we once had. But number two, that when we are rejected by God, then we lose our privileged positions as God's children. Today, we look at stagnation or lack of progress as a second consequence of rebellion after rejection. So God rejects you, but once he rejects you, then you, you, you stall, you, you, you begin to stagnate. Now, let me say this about lack of progress or stagnation as a second consequence of rebellion. Stagnation simply means, I mean, stalling. It means not making any headway. It means being stale. It means becoming tasteless. And when that happens, the anointing of God goes away from you. And so, number one, we see so losing favor in the eyes of God because the Lord had rejected him. He loses favor in God's eyes completely. And this means that a person who was selected to be the king of the most powerful nation then, the nation of Israel, whom God had covenanted with that you will be my people, I will be your God. No one will overcome you. God had made covenants with Israel to fight for them. Saul is in a position where, as the king and the commander of the armed forces, he cannot lead people into war. In chapter 16, when you read chapter 16, and I'll touch on that uh, uh, a little later, and you read even chapter 17, he can't. He's completely helpless. The guy can't progress. He can't move forward. He's stagnant. He's told. He's stale. He's tasteless. I would rather add, he's hopeless as well. Because a whole nation is behind him and is meant to lead them. But because he's lost touch with God because of rebellion, the favor goes away. Friends, do you know that when you rebel against God, when people tell you uh, something on behalf of God, or when God speaks to you from his word, and you give it a deaf ear, and you ignore it, that you deliberately um, suppress it and choose to go your own way, then God simply discovers that you have nothing to do with him. He takes away his favor from you, and he leaves you there. There is nothing as terrible as the Lord taking his favor away from you because you remain exposed. Let me remind you guys, you see these little things that happen to us in this life. Uh, some of you, um, God has blessed you with wonderful children, wonderful spouses. Some of you, God has blessed you with resources. Some of you, God has blessed you with positions of influence. Some of you even influence things for this country or in a region, in a particular space. Some of you internationally. I interact with several of you who influence things even beyond our borders. You know, those are favors of God. But let me tell you, when you rebel against the Lord, 
when you turn your back on him, when you disobey God, he removes favor from you. Then you remain exposed. The second thing away from the favor of God leaving you is that God raises your replacements in your very presence. You know, those are examples that you've stagnated, that, that you're not progressing. You know, God is in the business of doing things. God is a missioner. He's the grand missioner. He's the chief missioner of the world. And he's still accomplishing things for his glory in this world. And that is why he gives us jobs. He gives us positions. He calls us to places to influence things for him. Now, if one person has rebelled, turned their back on the Lord, disobeyed him, what does he do? You find yourself stagnant. You find yourself completely not moving forward. Then the Lord raises your replacement. The sad bit of it is that he raises your replacement in your seeing, not because you're handing over, not because your time is up, not because you've, you've delivered your vision, but because you have failed. That is an embarrassment. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, the Bible says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, that is David, in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel went on to Ramah. The Lord searched and looked from Jesus' house and he picked David to be the successor of a rebellious and a failed soul. Friends, you know, sin is a terrible thing. And you see the consequence of sin here in the life of Saul? He's completely being stripped off his kingship, his role. And the Lord is raising a replacement to him. It means Satan is pulling you back because you have given him a foothold. When you dangle sin, when you play around with sin and dance with sin and demons, Satan finds a foothold in that space. John Nganga preached to us the first Sunday of this month, and he reminded us that sometimes we play around with things like alcohol, we play around, for us men, with things like uh, concubines, you know, we play around with things like corruption. We play around with those little sins and we know how to cover them. Let me tell you, any form of sin for you as a believer is giving Satan a foothold. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, that do not give Satan a foothold. Because that is what Saul did. He gave Satan a foothold by hiding Agag and not killing all the animals as he had been instructed. In chapter 15 of First Samuel, he kept the first ones in the guise of going to offer them as a sacrifice to the Lord. Let me tell you, when the enemy finds that space, he stands on it, then he can now attack you because you've given him a space to stand on. Deny the devil a foothold by refusing to be a sinner, by refusing to be an agent of Satan that the devil place around with. When you do that, then he holds you back. He will hold your business back. He will hold your family progress back. You will see manifestations in your children of things not happening right because that, that, is, that is the lack of progress. That is a stagnation. It is a pullback by Satan. And I pray and I want to encourage you today that there are breakthroughs, there are victories, there are successes, there are miracles in God. When we walk in righteousness, when we walk in righteousness, then you attract the favor of God. And then the Lord progresses you and blesses you. That when it comes the time for you to hand over, you're handing over because you've accomplished your mission, because you have delivered your mandate, not because you failed. May the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Israel, the one from the tribe of David, speak to your heart and cause you to quickly mend your ways so that sin does not have a space in you. We share this 
the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.